Hi, and welcome back to our tech tutorials for Amazon EC2 Mac. My name is Scott Malkey, and I'm a specialist solutions architect with Amazon EC2. Today, we'll be advancing our skills using Amazon EC2 Mac instances by learning about our options for persistent storage and how we can get started using these storage options. Amazon EC2 Mac instances give customers several options for storage. The Amazon Elastic Block Store, or EBS, is block-level storage that allows you the flexibility to run your own storage stacks with very high performance. EBS is by default highly available and backed with your choice of HDD or SSD media. Amazon Elastic File System, or EFS, allows customers a very streamlined experience for file storage by directly providing the Network File System, or NFS, Amazon Simple Storage Service, or S3, is another option for Mac instances for highly available and persistent storage. S3 is an object store and offers very low cost storage, which can be a great fit, especially when you have a very large data set. Today, we're going to focus on EBS and EFS. We'll be diving deeper into S3 in an upcoming video. We'll be using the CLI for most of the operations in this video because it's a bit quicker for this process and I can automate some steps. The AWS CLI is pre-installed on every EC2 Mac instance. So let's get started with EBS. This persistent storage option I think is the easiest to start with because if you're using an EC2 Mac instance, you're actually already using it. EC2 Mac instances leverage EBS for the boot volume. This process is managed by the AWS Nitro system which is physically connected to the Mac Mini via Thunderbolt 3 and appears to Mac OS as an external, local, NVMe connected disk. Here's what the EBS boot volume looks like in Disk Utility. Notice that the APFS container for the Macintosh HD boot volume is still at 64 gigabytes. Even though we launched this instance with a 300 gigabyte boot volume, Let's go ahead and expand the APFS container to fill the entire EBS volume. I'm going to copy and paste in some commands to expand the EBS boot volume. First, I repair the disk. And then I finally resize the container. This may take some time, but with Movie Magic, we'll speed it up a bit. And you can see it grew the device from 64 gigs to 321 gigs. EBS has a number of parameters to configure the performance of the EBS boot volume. These can be specified at launch time via the CLI or the launch wizard. The most important ones are the size of the volume and the type of the volume. Size is very straightforward. It's in gigabytes, and each individual EBS volume can be up to 64 terabytes in size. EC2 Mac instances support up to 16 EBS volumes. That is one boot and up to 15 data volumes. So you can add a ton of storage to these machines. The second important parameter for EBS is the type of volume. The two most popular options are our GP volumes, which are our general purpose volumes, and our IO volumes, which have provisioned IOPS. The IOPS of GP volumes generally scale with volume size. The larger the volume, the more IOPS. The I.O. volumes let you specify the exact amount of IOPS you would like, up to 16,000. In addition to the flexibility of size and IOPS, EBS provides for exceptional durability. EBS volumes themselves can have a separate life cycle from the instance itself, so you can reuse both data and boot volumes as you would like with new instances. Lastly, EBS volumes provide an easy method of snapshotting allowing you to back up at a volume or instance level for copying across AWS regions, sharing with other AWS accounts, or creating new Amazon machine images, AMIs, which you can use to boot new instances. Let's snapshot our EBS boot volume and create a new AMI now. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and create a image from my mac1.metal instance. The only thing I need to get out of the console is the instance ID. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy that. And then I'm gonna go over to terminal. Uh, any command line environment will do. And I will go ahead and paste that into my command, which is cleverly called create image. And I've put the instance ID there at the end and I hit enter. 
and I can see I get an AMI ID back that I can use in any uh, other CLI commands to launch another instance. Another type of storage we have on AWS is our Elastic File System, which provides network attached storage over the NFS v4 protocol. EFS has similar options to EBS. Either you can scale IOPS based on the size of the file system, or you can provision IOPS beforehand. Let's go ahead and mount an EFS file system on our Mac instance. Okay, so I've VNC'd into my Mac Mini. You can see I've got the EC2 Mac instance there. First thing I'm gonna do is brew install Amazon EFS utils. This will use Homebrew, which is pre-installed on every EC2 Mac instance to install some utilities uh, necessary to mount the EFS volume. This takes uh, a few minutes. I'll go ahead and use some movie magic to speed it up a little bit. And now that that's complete, you can see it gives me some uh, other commands to run, so perform below actions to, to start using EFS. So I'm gonna go ahead and run those commands. I'll just copy and paste them over. And uh, I'm also going to enable the watchdog for the TLS mounts. So I'll copy and paste those commands in. That uh, sudo cp up here, yep. Copy, paste, and now my system is all set to use EFS. Now that we're all set and installed for EFS, I'm gonna go ahead and mount the EFS volume. I paste in my file system ID, and let's mount it at volume slash EFS. You can see it shows up on the desktop and I can read and write to it just like any other network attached storage. We hope you've enjoyed learning how you can use EBS and EFS for persistent storage for EC2 Mac instances. We'll go over how to use Mac instances with Amazon S3 in an upcoming video. Please check back for more video tutorials on EC2 Mac. Thanks for watching.